Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify rational expressions. Now, to understand simplifying rational expressions, there's a couple things we need to understand. First of all is going to be the division property. And basically, the division property is going to state, you know, if we have a term or an expression divided by itself, well, then that's going to equal to 1. And it doesn't matter if that's, you know, a number, like I said. You can be um, expression, or you could even do like x plus 6 over x plus 6. As long as whatever's in the numerator is ex divided by whatever's in the denominator are exactly the same, then we know they're going to equal to 1. Now, the other important, other important thing is what we call the uh, multiplication identity. And basically what that says is, you know, anytime you have 1 multiplied by a value, that's always just going to equal that value. So, you know, 1 times 6 is just going to equal to 6. Now, this is very, very important because we, we kind of practiced simplifying uh, fractions, you know, a long time ago. And we use these identity, we use these elements, and, but you might not have actually discussed them as a mathematical purpose. So for instance, if I had you know, 12 divided by 6, a lot of times we just say, well, 6 goes into 12 you know, two times. But in reality, what you could kind of think about this is really, we had this as, we could rewrite this as 2 times 6 divided by 6. 6 divided by 6 is equal to 1, so 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So what we're going to do when we're working through these problems is we basically want to be able to break apart each of these expressions so that they are a product. So they're multiplying. So you got to make sure you multiply them by or, or separate them by multiplication. And therefore, then we're going to apply the division property so that they equal to 1. Now, that's very important because if you look over here, notice how x plus 6 over x plus six equal is equal to 1. We didn't, you can't say like, you can't divide out the 6s and then just say, you know, it's like x over x. So you have to have terms separated by multiplication. So if you remember, taking an expression and rewriting by multiplication is called factoring, right? So each one of these problems, except for this example right here, we are going to be applying factoring because to apply the division property, we have to make sure our terms are separated by multiplication. All right, so let's actually start with the problem where we have our terms that are separated by multiplication. So we can kind of start there. So here you can see we have four terms, x plus 7, x plus 9, x minus 9, x plus 7. Each of those terms are separated by multiplication. Now, since they're separated by multiplication, we can apply the division property. But remember, the division property only applies when we have terms that are exactly the same. So even though x plus 9 and x minus 9 are very similar, the plus and the minus means that they are not the exact same expression. So therefore, we cannot divide them to equal 1. But we can say x plus 7 and x plus 7 do divide up to equal 1. Now, you could rewrite this you know, is x plus 9 over x minus 9, and then times x plus 7 or x plus 7 equals 1. But as you'll notice, you know, through time, we really don't need to write that multiplying by 1. We can just leave that as x plus 9, x minus 9. A lot of times also, you know, when we kind of put a line through them, we say they cancel out, which they really don't cancel each other out. They divide to equal 1, and then you multiply everything by 1, which again is just going to give us this product. But for the sake of time, usually that's, you know, a lot of times where those words will come from. For the sake of time, I am just going to divide them out and then leave our expression as we have. So for the rest of the expressions, we have terms that are not separated by multiplication. So what we need to do is factor them, so therefore they will be separated by multiplication. In this first example, there's nothing I can do to simplify the denominator by factoring. But you notice in the numerator, I can factor this by factoring out the GCF, which in this case is a 3. So when I factor out the GCF here of 3, I'm left with 3 times x minus 1 divided by 6. Well, I could rewrite this. You know, you could break down equals you know, 3 times x minus 1 over you know, 3 times 2, and then division property. But in reality, I think majority of us are pretty comfortable with saying 3 over 6 is equivalent to 1 half, right? There's really a 1 half there. But again, same kind of thing. We don't need to write the 1 half there. We can just write our final answer as x minus 2, or I'm sorry, x minus 1 over 2, and just leave our answer there. It's not wrong to have their 1 there. It's not wrong in that case, or it's not wrong to show this work. It's just a little bit extra work that we don't really need to show. All right, so for the next one, we're going to have some trinomials. Um, I know some people are probably a little bit um, maybe um, need some help with the trinomials, but this isn't the purpose of this video. So I will be factoring the trinomials um, in my head. I will talk my way through it. But if you need more help with factoring trinomials, uh, just go ahead and you know, see my videos uh, for factoring. I have tons of playlists and examples for that. 
So in this example here, you can obviously see that I have no expressions, or none of my terms are separated by multiplication. So I need to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. Remember when factoring trinomials, what we're basically trying to do is find our two factors where uh, the two numbers multiplied to give you negative 11 and add to give you a positive 10. And I can determine those factors are going to be x plus 11 times x minus 1. Notice 11 times negative 1 gives me negative 11. 11 plus negative 1 gives me, uh, gives me a 10. And obviously, you could always check your answer by applying FOIL. In my denominator, I'm looking for two terms that multiply to give me negative 8 and add to give me 7. And again, here, I'm going to have x plus 8 times, looks like this, x minus 1. Okay, The exact same kind of type of problem. Now we can see, though, I have an x minus 1 over an x minus 1. So we know that's going to divide to equal 1. And then it's just going to be 1 times this expression. So my final answer would be x plus 11 divided by x plus 8. Okay, And just to make sure I'll, to not confuse my other answers, I'll just put little boxes over these. Um, over here, I can multiply my numerator um, over here. So I can write this as x. Ba, 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 ba. All right, let's see. What two numbers? x uh, plus 5 times x minus 1. And then over here, this is a difference of two squares. So I know that's going to be x minus 5 times x plus 5. Remember, though, we can only apply a division property when terms are exactly the same. So that's going to be x minus 1 over x minus 5. Um, over here, in this example, you can see that I can factor out my GCF. I have an extra x in the numerator. So by factoring out an x, I'm left with an x plus 4. And then over here in my denominator, um, you could, uh, over here in my denominator, I need to figure out what two numbers multiply to give me negative 24, add to give me uh, negative 2. So it looks like that's going to be x minus 6 times x plus 4. x plus 4 is going to divide out, leaving me with an x divided by x minus 6. And then in my last example, I have x minus 2 divided by x minus 4x uh, four plus 4. Notice, um, again, I can't factor anything in the numerator, but to my denominator, that's actually a perfect square binomial. So I know that that is basically rewritten as x minus 2 over x minus 2. Or a lot of times, you could also see that as you know, x minus 2 times x minus 2 squared. Right? But either way, if you were to see it like this or to see it like that, we know that we can divide them. Now again, remember, x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 leaves us with a 1. So we have to have something in my numerator, right? Well, if you have like, um, I don't know, 3 times 1, uh, three times one fifth, well, you're basically multiplying 3 over 1 times 1 fifth, which is 3 fifths. So if this goes to 1, it's really 1 over 1. So my final answer is 1 over x minus 2. Okay. Now, another thing, one last thing that we could also uh, go through, it's not the purpose of this video, but is also to finding you know, the constraints. Because um, technically, and if we were going to be dis um, looking at these, a lot of times we could also write in the strain of values of x that they could not be, as such as you know, over here we can't have x being equal to 9, because then you'd be dividing by 0. Um, but I'm not going to go through the constraints in that video. But that is something that is also very common that we uh, discuss when dealing with rational expressions. But for right now, ladies and gentlemen, that is your basic idea of simplifying rational expressions. Thanks.